try to we don't try to get too far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as usual, we want to start out with those we need to mention in prayer and those who have a prayer list and of course continue. I, Richard's not here today, huh? Oh, okay. Is he is he gonna come at the regular service? Okay. Well, good. I know Rick has been having a hard time with that. All this medicines and swellings and stuff like that. He's still having a pretty tough time. It still doesn't have a whole lot of energy. And uh, but. To his credit, every Thursday night, now, most, most every Thursday night, he's at Summer Manor, and most every Sunday morning, he's at Summer Manor. Uh, so he's, he's dedicated. He's, he's uh, to me, he inspires me a lot to go through what he's going, to feel as bad as he does and still teach the class like he does. Uh, he, he, that's great. It's good to see Carolyn. You feeling? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. That's great news. Uh, Stephanie said she was feeling better, so that's that's good to know. Henry's getting around with a little bit of a limp. I thought I saw him trying to kick a while ago, but I didn't want to go there. So. No, I thought I, I, I thought <laughs> I had a torn ligament the way things were, was acting, mm. but. But it turned out I just tweaked my knee. You put a shot in it. And I had no more pain or nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was told that there was a knee when they did them, put that shot in that knee, that, that was so painful. And I had it done, and I thought, well, they, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> so, um, let's see, who else we got? Was that Rick? And of course, continue to remember Rich because I, his whole—I mean—that family really <laughs> had a tough time. You got Rick, and you got Amy, his daughter-in-law, and you got uh, yeah Cheryl, and then you got Chris, and and you, you got Carol, <laughs> and yeah, and Richard himself still. Uh, he 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 comes a lot of time when he don't feel good neither. Rich. Richard has a lot of days where he just don't feel good. Uh, and so, uh, but we have that service on Sunday evening for them, for the people at Summer Manor. Remember those in prayer too. We got those, it's, there's some going through cancer treatments there and other <coughs> things there. So just kind of remember the Summer Manor group uh, when you pray. Um, Phillips doing better, right? Where I thought I saw, there she is. Yeah, because they were there for a little while. His time was running around at running out at rehab, and that don't need to happen. He needs. He needs to be there, so pray that nothing serious happens, but that somehow or another they see the need to keep him at his rehab because uh, just Gwen just can't deal with that right now. She just can't. That's too much. And so, you know, continue to remember her and her prayers and him, and then specifically right now that he can stay at that uh, rehab facility. Cherie is doing better, she said. She said she wasn't going to run a marathon, but other than that, she's doing better, so that's, that's good. Emily, Cindy, I don't know anything. A little bit better. Anybody else? Oh, Beverly. Beverly, we were so excited. You know, they said it was going to be August the 6th before she could get her MRI. We were so excited, Huntsville Hospital called, said Crestwood would do it Saturday. 
this past Saturday at 12.30. Man, we were just high in the kite because we knew that MRI was going to get done, maybe something get done, make her feel better. We get over there, go through all the paperwork, get back there to the technician, and he says, oh, I can't do this. There's no rep here to turn off the defibrillator. And I said, y'all set this up. I mean, this, this was set up, you know. So it, it was just a disappointing thing. It wasn't the technician's fault. He didn't, he's just there to, to do it. And, but she fell the other day and hit her head apparently had a little bit of a concussion. So she was throwing up there for a while doing all the normal things that people have concussions doing. So that's another thing. She gets dizzy and she just falls. And uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. So continue to remember her prayers maybe she can get through this somehow or another find out what's going on and of course we already said that she's probably going to have to go on dialysis for her kidney so she, she just got all kinds of issues uh, I don't know whether you know it or not but she her heart only works at 27 percent and the doctor's happy I mean, he's excited that it's working at 27%. She, when she was diagnosed in 2002, they said that she had 10 years to live. And so she beat that. And so I'm thankful for that part of it. But continue to remember all these in your, in your prayers. Uh, Henry, if you will, lead us in a prayer. <laughs> I can't remember all of these you That's, mentioned, but, but, but we're good. God knows who they are. We'll just ask that he, he take care of them. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the privilege of being here this morning. We thank you, Father, that we didn't have any of the bad weather that was spoken of that's happening early this morning, Father, and we pray that you would uh, continue to watch over us where this weather's concerned, Father, and not only us, Father, but others as well. Father, we're so, so thankful for the privilege of prayer, Father. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. And, Father, we, we continue to uh, ask that you would be with those of our sick, which is a pretty good number, Father. We know, know that you can do all things, and you can heal, heal these bodies, Father, these problems that, of the, our sick, Father. And we pray, pray that, you would, that you would do so, that they might be restored back to, back to a better portion of health. Father, help us each day to be the kind of people that you would have us be. To, uh, and Father, help us to be more faithful, the uh, entire congregation, Father, to be more faithful in attendance at, at service, especially for class. class. Classroom time is so important, Father. We can ask questions and learn things that we can't, can't always learn on, uh, from the preaching on Sunday morning because... Uh, the preacher can only cover so much, and we can cover a lot of things in class if, if questions are asked and people want to know answers, Father. We, we pray that you would be with the leaders of our nation, uh, and not only ours, Father, but nation, nations around the world. We know there's a lot of turmoil and, and war going on at this time, Father, and we pray, pray that you would help our leaders to, to uh, keep, keep us in a safe position, Father. We, we know that there's a lot of stuff going on among our leadership that, that uh, that's not good for our country. And Father, we pray that you would help them to realize that they need to look to you for guidance and not, not depend wholly upon their own uh, strength and knowledge of what, what to do. Father, go with us throughout this period. Worship this morning. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth that all things said and done might be done according to your will. For these blessings we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> what, we, what we left out with, we was on Matthew chapter 4 last week, and we had gone through and shown where that uh, Satan always puts up his bait. 
And otherwise, you wouldn't go to these traps. You, you wouldn't go to the animal trap. You wouldn't take the fishing lure. You wouldn't do all those things if Satan didn't paint this picture and uh, of things looking good and everything's going to be hunky-dory and things like that. Uh, it, even when you think about the prodigal son, and here he is, you know, got this picture. I, I'm, I got plenty of money. I, I'm going to a foreign land. I'm getting away from this farming business, and I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to have a good time. And Satan pictures, gives him this picture of, man, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be great. You're going to be the man while you're going that, off into this foreign land. What the Satan didn't picture to him was a hog pen. And say so he leaves out the hog pen for us. And all we see is this bait and it's dangling there and it looks good. And then like Eve, when she looked at that fruit, it's forbidden fruit. That's one thing that makes you want it anyway, isn't it? Kind of something that's forbidden. You just, you, man, I wonder why they don't want us to, <laughs> to grab out. Uh, I wonder what it is about that is, that's just forbidden. I, I, so it kind of wants you, kind of wants you to lean toward. Okay, let's go get that forbidden fruit because I don't. We don't know what's going to happen, Henry. children in a sense when it comes to comes to obeying our father in heaven our, our children the more you tell them they can't have it it's not good for them the more they want it <clears throat> yeah that's it's, that's absolutely that's, true that's been a thing that's been as old as my dad said something that he didn't want me to do something i'm like man it that is just so hard not to try to go do that because he told me not to do it but what I knew was if I did, what I was going to get wasn't worth the price of most of the time of investigating to find out if it was good or not. That's what I was fixing to say, that the punishment that came with it, the razor strap, the, the switches, the whatever, mm -hmm. whatever was hand, hand, handy, calf rope, plow line, just, just whatever was handy, just, uh, straightened, straightened your thoughts out a little bit. I thought it was cruel that we had to go pick our switches. And they had to be the right kind and not one of those limber, you know, ones that would break or anything like that. You had to, couldn't have one of them rotten ones that hit you one time and it was done. Now you got to have a good switch that you got to pick out to get your own whip. And I thought that was kind of cruel. But what, what I wanted to say when you look at all this is there's that bait and there's that... Uh, you know, snare he's got sitting up there and he's got it dangling and it looks so good. And when he looked at Eve, Eve already had that desire for that fruit. And now that it's forbidden fruit and what Satan was saying, if, if God really loved you, he would let you have this. And first of all, he's holding out on you because the reason why he's holding out on you is because when you eat this, you're going to ask your eyes, it's going to be open, you're going to be as wise as God. And he don't want that, so, you know, you, if you eat it, I'm just telling you, you're going to be wise as God, and you're not going to die. Now that fruit's really dangling. It's really looking good. You already got desire. You already, now, he's appeared to the intellect of you, and now there's only one more, you know, two more steps, really, to go to before death happens. And that was the promise on it. And what's so neat about Matthew chapter 4 is and where God, you know, Jesus is on the temptations each time is saying it is written. And what Satan is dangling before uh, Jesus is, you know, you prayed in that garden of Gethsemane not to go through this. Not If there's any way to let this cup pass from you, then, you know, let it pass from me. And Satan goes, I can do that. He took him on this high pinnacle and he said, you see all these worlds out here? They're yours. You don't have to die on a cross. You don't have to do any of that. Because what, what I'm going to offer you is the whole kingdom, you can rule over it. Only one thing 
you got to bow down and worship me. And Jesus then used the scripture. And that's why it's so important for each and every one of us to know the scripture. Because what do we walk by? Faith or sight? We walk by faith. And so if we're going to walk by faith, we need to see what the word of God says so that you can detect that bait. Satan's got the bait there. It's really a naked hook. And you're fixing the bite into a naked hook. It's just got a, something that looks really enticing to go to. And you're fixing to step into a trap. But there's some bait there. What the Word of God does is introduce you and let you see, here's the bait. And so don't take it. Because when you look, when you take it, the bait's there. And now you're going to be able to distinguish and to see, okay, Satan has put bait in front of me. And he's, uh, so what I'm really about to do is I'm about to take this hook, naked hook. And what I'm really about to do is to step into this trap. And I know that because I studied. And I looked at it. And I have the word of God to look for. So we had, so far we've looked at two stages. We've looked at desire. That's the hunter type thing. That's the trap deal. And what that is appealing to is our emotions. And they want to, God, Satan wants us to get our emotions involved. The second thing we looked at was deception. Well, what that deception is, is, is playing on is our uh, intellect. He, he's trying to play with our intellect on that one. This third one we're looking at is disobedience. This is the third stage that James introduces us in. What disobedience is leaning on is us to not to accept our will and things. This, this is appealing to our will. And that's what we've talked about over and over and over again, that it's a choice that we have. That's the will part. We have a will. We have a choice whether or not we take the bait or whether we don't. And so what, you want, what we want to do is we want to look at this deception here and this disobedience because that's when now this desire, uh, which is played with your emotion, and this uh, uh, deception, which is played with your intellect and now what's going to happen is he's going to appeal to your will and what Satan is trying to do is what he tried to do with Jesus on his temptation what he tried to do with Eve on his temptation and what he tries to do with each and every one of us on our temptation and, and kind of the idea that God's holding back on you God doesn't really care for you if he did you wouldn't be going through this and that was the whole thing with uh, James's group when they were in verse 13 when he says, you know, now God is evil. God's tempting you with evil. And that's what they were saying. Basically what, what they were saying when they used verse 13 is God is tempting you with evil. James is saying, no, he don't. He's not evil. He, can't, he don't have an evil nature in him. He can't tempt you with evil. And so when he appeals to your will now, you know that because of the word of God. And all these trials that he's been going through, he's been trying to tell you if you evaluate them, you, when you get to the other side, you're going to be blessed. And you know what the trial is for. The trial is to help you get to endurance and to help you have a mature faith. That's what the trial is for. Now, understand that, know that, and apply it to your will. Choose now based off of God's word and not off of this bait that Satan is, is offering you. Uh, so many times, you know, it's, it doesn't take long till we get, <laughs> we take the bait and we get hooked, we get trapped, and, and then next thing you know, because uh, what James does here is he switches from the 
hunter and a fisherman over to giving birth. And what happens when, he, when you get this deceived, all of a sudden now you've done been hooked, you've done been trapped, your emotions have been there, and just wait until this baby, and that's that disobedience, wait till this sin progresses to the point that it brings forth, that it's born. And when that sin brings forth, and you go through this disobedience, what's the next step? The next step is death. And that was what the first concern was, and the first consideration that James gives is, he's saying, he said, now listen, if you want to overcome triumph, you want to have triumph over this temptation, the first thing you need to do is consider God's judgment. And that's kind of looking ahead, you know, looking what's down the road. What's down the road is that God's judgment is this sin is going to ultimately lead to death. And uh, we'll look at that just a little bit more in just a moment. But sometimes we, we think, well, I don't really feel like going to worship service. Or we might say, well, I don't really feel like going to Bible study. I don't feel like going to Wednesday night Bible study. I don't feel like going to worship. See, the problem is that Christianity is not really truly based upon feeling. Christianity is based upon will. And you might not feel like it, but you need to will to do it. You need to make that, you, you're a free will person, you need to make that choice. And I know sometimes when you, you know it, we're not talking about being sick, you know, like sick, sick. We're just talking about, well, I just don't feel like going today, or I don't feel like doing, studying my Bible today, I don't feel like attending worship today. Then there's a choice, you know, then we need to have a will there where we make a choice that I'm going to do that regardless of, of my, what my feeling is, but I'm going to rely upon the will and the will of God to do this. Uh, Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works, it's God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So what we need to do is turn to God and for His will and uh, so that we don't fall into this, this temptation and give over to this temptation uh, by giving in to what? This bait that Satan has put out in front of us. All right, and then the fourth stage, we've already talked about this, is what? What's our fourth stage or the fourth stage of this process of sin? Yes. Very good, Scott. That's moral as well as, as eternal. If we don't get that straightened out, it's going to be eternal. And so we don't, that we don't want that. So when disobedience gives birth to this sin, then what's left is that death part. It's not giving you life. It's giving you death. What God gives you is life. What Sin gives you when you let it go to the ultimate process and the end of the process is, uh, is death. And what you're going to go through is you're going to feel a lot of sorrow. You're going to go through a lot of pain uh, from failing the test. And, and why? Because you didn't yield to God's word. And so you don't have to go. Since you know that the end result a sin is going to be death, then would that not kind of deter us to, from going through that? I think that, you know that would be a something that we need to look into and say, you know, I don't want, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to, I don't want to have death. I don't want that to be my ultimate place where it's it, where it's going to go. So don't you know? Don't yield to our temptation. That's easier said than. Done. All this is easier said, you know, when we're sitting here, here talking about it. But when we get into the Word of God and we and we're looking to the Word of God, 
then it's, we're not as easily tricked or we're not as easily deceived. And it's, it's a whole lot easier to us to see that there's a bait there and we don't take it. We, we take it. We do the, what God wants us to do. 2 Corinthians 11, 3, Paul had this concern that we would be tricked and trapped and deceived. So in, in the book of Corinthians, Paul said, But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so you see who's that who's really doing this temptation part here and who's deceiving you and who's trying to overcome you, Satan. And it's, this is not, James is saying, it's not God. You're blaming God because of you going through a trial and God's allowed you to go through a trial and since God has allowed you to go through a trial, it must be his fault because you failed. And that's what they, these uh, the reader of James is saying it's, it's got to be God's fault because he put me he allowed, allowed me to go through the trial since he allowed me to go through the trial and I'm failing this trial then it's God's fault and James says no it's your fault you got to put the blame on where the blame belongs to it's, it's your fault that, uh, because God has given you a way out and he's given you a way to escape. And you didn't take it. You, you gave in to, this, to the bait and stuff. Romans 6, 23, the very first part of it says, For the wages of sin is death. Eternally separated from God. But, now the gift of God, that's eternal life. So there's death, eternal life. You know, you know, if you go through this process of sin and you carry it to the end result, there's going to be death. But also, if you choose not to do that and choose to go through these trials and let God have his way with you, then eternal life. Uh, and that's the two things that we, that's the choices. So it depends on which one do we want and which one should we want. And since we know that, we can make a better decision and we can see what Satan's trying to do. He's, he wants us to fail. I think that's so important. I think we forget about there's two sides to this, to this world that's going on. We're, we're, there's the Christian side and then there's Satan who so desperately wants you to fail. He does not want you to And he's trying every single thing that he can to get you to fail. And particularly when we go through trials and the tribulations and temptations and things, Satan wants you to lose. And you got, we got to remember that as we go through these things that we go through. Because if you do, and you, and you can turn to the God, you can see what he's trying to do. And you know, you know he's trying to defeat you. And you know God wants you to Succeed. God wants you to have eternal life. Satan wants you to have uh, death. Mm -hmm. He created us, but uh, Satan, Satan turns around and puts it in our minds that we need to blame God because God is responsible for it because of that, and yet none of us would want it any other way. Right. We like the fact that we have a choice. God gave us a choice. And uh, not blame God for it. Yeah, I want to be, I mean, it's part of being a free moral agent. The good part of it is I, I do have a choice. I, I can go to heaven. God could have set it up, and, and really it's truth. But the wages of sin is death, we just pointed out. What does that mean? What we have deserved and what we have earned and what we should have is to be eternally separated from God forever. That's what we should have. Thank goodness that he gave us a choice, that he set up a plan. Now we have a choice of whether or not we adopt that plan or accept that plan or not. Uh, 
Verse 17. What is how... Scott, if you got that, you can just read it. Verse 17. James chapter 1, too. I forgot. I'm sorry. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Okay, so here's the second part. If we're going to overcome this temptation, this is the second thing we need to consider. That God's goodness. When you look about it, the first thing we need to consider was God's judgment, which at that's a negative thing, but it's a good thing that we know this negative part because what ultimately ends up in sin, God's judgment is going to be death. And, and so now, here's a good positive thing. When you look at James 1.17, now he's saying what we need to consider when we go through these temptations and trials and things is God's goodness. And uh, so... Don't go with the idea that God's holding out on us because he's not. He's given us all these good and perfect gifts. And don't think about, you know, here's, here's his line. He's going to give you some kind of line so that you fall for it. But when you look around and understand, God is, is so good. And, and his goodness is so awesome. And... James chapter 1 verse 17, you know there's the first part of it says what every good gift. Uh, so the, the very, there, there's two different words for the gifts used here. Every good gift, there's a great word used for that gift. And then every, the perfect gift, there's another great word for that gift. And we won't kind of look at that because I think it's, kind of important to get where you can kind of understand what's going on in the English part of it. And you can then say, man, God is great. God is wonderful. And therefore, I don't want to get, give into temptations because of what God's done for me. Uh, the, where it says every good gift, the word good there is, is agathos. And agathos means good, perfect, Complete, upright, kind, benevolent, useful, acceptable, wholesome. Now, does that sound like a God that's trying to tempt you to do evil? He's trying to give you a re, every good gift. And the part about this part from the Greek standpoint is that this is really not talking about the gift. <laughs> This first phrase is talking about giving, the act of giving. So here God, what God is doing is generously giving you a gift. That's, what, that's the first part of it. The word gift there is doses, and it's gift or gift. So it's the, what it's concentrating on there is the act of giving, God's act of giving. And the, the emphasis is on the Greek word it's upon uh, the act of giving to a response or to a uh, petition or a um, gigantic favor. So going back basically to verse 5, when they were going through these trials and they, if they couldn't do them, then what God said was, Ask for wisdom, and I'll give it to you generously. And I'll give you whatever you need to get through these trials, what, whatever it is that you need. Here, it's kind of the same kind of idea, but this first part is, uh, if you kind of interpret it kind of the way it's, um, in the English, the way it was, what it's generally meant is, this is a generous, every generous act. Oh, Ronnie, stop. what what he's talking about there—the gifts that bless us—are the gifts from God. 
Yes. They're, they're blessings to us. Yes. And this, the first part is talking about his, he's a generous act. It's, he is giving you his, now the second part, every perfect gift, that's talking about the gift itself. So you got a generous God whose nature is to give gifts. That's his nature. He, his nature is to give. And since that's his nature, his, don't say that he's trying to tempt you to evil. Why? Because he, he's trying to act on your behalf to give you good gifts. He's acting. He's giving you generously good gifts. Things that's useful for you, things that you can that complete you, that kind that's upright, it's wholesome, it's acceptable, it's useful. That's the kind of thing that he's doing. That second gift, the well, first teleos is the perfect part. We've kind of seen that before. Usually, when it kind of perfect refers to like human beings, that is uh, basically referring to complete, mature, full grown, adult. That kind of thing. I'm not for sure that this one is not actually saying God's gift is perfect for you. That this time it's, it's really truly perfect. He's a generous God who's given you uh, these generous gifts. But also he's a God that's given you teleos. And that word for gift on this one, it sounds like you're getting ready to do the scale of do, re, mi, fa, sol. It's do, it's <laughs> do re ma. And this do re ma is a, a present to you. It's something that you don't deserve. You haven't earned. It's a, it's a free gift. It's free, undeserved, unearned uh, gift that he's given to you. So what this is kindly, the way you would kindly interpret this, if you were trying to, to interpret it into English from the Greek, it would be every generous act of giving with every perfect gift. As the way verse 17 would be. And so this is part of James to me. This is part of James' evidence that if this God gives like this, he's trying to give you the perfect gift, he's generous with this, then he can't be the one that's trying to do you evil. And verse 16, he'd already said, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Don't be deceived. You're trying to say that this temptation, this trial that's coming up on you, is God trying to make you do evil. Look, he gives you generous gift. He gives you the perfect gift. He gives you exactly what you need for whatever you need, whenever you need it. And guess what? That part where it says constantly or it says coming down from above, that's a continuous action and that's present tense. So that word there that's used is really kata baino. That word means continuous. That it, it is continually giving you the gifts that we need to carry on the Christian life. So don't say that he's trying to tempt you with evil because he's not. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That, and that's really what we're going to go to in a minute. Somebody, uh, let me see, just pick, Henry, we'll just let you read Deuteronomy 6, 19 through 25. Yeah, 19 through 25. I think this is something that we need today, and especially when you're going through these trials and tribulations and, and things. And if you have a tendency to want to blame God, think about this. Ready? Yeah. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee. Oh, wait a minute. Dude, yeah, you said Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 6 and 19, through 25. and 19 through 25. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee as the Lord has spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the, test the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? 
Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders and great signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us up out of, up thence, and that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that we might he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. And see there, he, I mean, he's shown them all, he's done all these great things for the children of Israel. He's shown them, hey, look, I've led you out of the land of Egypt. I've departed the Red Sea. I've made Pharaoh let you go. I've done all these things. So remember these things. Remember all the good things to us. And so that's what we need to do. We need that blessing. We need to remember what all the good things that God has done for us on a daily basis. All his gifts are good. They come from above. And with him, there's no variation of turn. Now with the sun, he's the father of light. So that means he's the creator of the sun, moon, and stars. And so what he's, what he's saying is that right there may have eclipses. The clouds may uh, cover them up and you may not see that light sometimes. There may be all kinds of things that keeps you from seeing the, the moon goes through different phases and all these things. So there's, and these lights here from the, from the creator himself, the, the things he's created, there may be a blockage. It might not give light. But he's, what he's telling you is but with God, as far as he goes and his blessings and his sending down your gifts and sending down things that you need, there's no blockage. There, there's just blessedness and there's, there's love and there's the things that God gives us. With him, there's no variation. There's no shadow. There's no covering up of his blessings. He sends them constantly down to you. And uh, so... That's our blessing, and he's in this Deuteronomy 6, 19 to 25, it shows all the blessings that Israel received. And so he said, tell them to your children. And when they ask you what's going on and what happened here and what happened there, tell them what happened and say that God did this. So now when you grow up and you're going through these things in life, different things in life, remember all the good things that God has done for you. And there's no variation. There's no shadow of turning. There's no, Scott? Yeah, God is not, God is unchangeable. Nobody exactly. can change God. So he's not going to change on us. Exactly. His nature is, he's a, he is a giving. His nature is giving. And even though, like I said, the, the sun, the moon, and the stars may have some issues of shining through sometimes, but not him and not his gifts, and not his presence that he's given you on this. We, I promise you we're going to move faster. I, I promise. That, that's going to happen. I, I, am, I am going to... I, I am going to... Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to make myself go... Uh,